Good morning. I am Supanon Jamon Surya, a master degree student in the School of Chemistry SUT. Today, I'll present my work in topic of molecular simulation of crystallization process of polyethylene with different topology, linear versus ring. This presentation will include the introduction about the polymer with different chain topology with comparison between linear and cyclic polyethylene and polymer crystallization. Then the technique of Monte Carlo simulation of polymer is introduced followed by the result, discussion, and summary. The objective of this work is to have better understanding at the molecular level for the effect of chain topology linear versus the cyclic on the crystallization behavior of polyethylene melt by computer simulation techniques. The polymer crystallization is very interesting and important in polymer science and technology. We can view the polymer crystal in various length scales starting from the smallest dimension in the unit cell where the polymer chain has to pack together and fold to uh, crystal structure proposed by Andrew Keller in 1957. As polymer crystal is rarely to be perfect, there should be a amorphous portion sandwich between crystalline unit as the layer structure. Then, this unit assembly to be spherulite, which is large structure and can be observed by the optical microscope. Cyclic polymer has been synthesized in the laboratory scale recently, and it brings about many interesting properties due to the lack of chain end, in particular for the folded chain structure in polymer crystal. Cyclic chain should behave differently. Interestingly, the crystal growth rate is faster than the linear chain as observed in the experiment. It is of interest to study for future for the crystallization characteristic of the cyclic and linear polymer. Because the cyclic polymer is very hard to prepare and no commercial samples are available. We want to study this polymer using the computer simulation techniques. We perform the coarse grain simulation instead of using the fully atomistic model, which is will consume too much computation time, maybe months or years, to simulate the polymer crystallization. The method start from the mapping polyethylene to coarse grain chain on the lattice and then perform Monte Carlo simulation to investigate the polymer crystallization based on various calculated property. This is the overview process of the polymer simulation procedure using in this work. First, we modify the parameter of coarse gain polymer chain mapped into the 2NND lattice from the RIS model and the Lennard-Jones potential function for the intermolecular non-bond interaction. We use the metropolis criteria to determine the movement of the polymer on the lattice. The rotational isomeric state model proposed by Paul J. Forey was applied to define the single chain conformation of polyethylene. This is the statistical weight matrix of the polyethylene which row and column represent each trans cos plus cos minus conformation. With this energy as sigma and omega for the polyethylene. For first order interaction, we determine from the repulsive group by Newman projection with first two bond, which ghost plus and ghost minus will be defined as sigma due to the closeness of the repulsive group and one for trans state because the C group is far from each other. Then the second order interaction for this further bond which is more mostly uh, repulsive as the different ghost state as ghost plus ghost minus and ghost minus ghost plus we define it as the omega state the other is one because the ch group is far away from each other each cost can be contain one ethylene unit or two carbon backbone and then we map them into the two NND or second nearest neighbor diamond lattice 
which is derived from the diamond lattice as a red dust. We remove the blue dot to get a distorted cubic lattice which give the coordination number very high as 12, which is the higher compared to, to the cubic lattice. The polymer simulation on the 2 NND lattice also allow the faster speed of computation and less memory usage for compared to the other simulation method. After we mapped polymer chain into, onto the 2 NND lattice, we can classify each conformation to four type A, B, C, D from their length from B I to I plus 2. S A B Z D, which can be defined uh, as four by four matrix. As the polyethylene had a symmetrical torsional energy profile, we can further group the C and D state together, so we can reduce them to three by three matrix. After we define the single chain parameter, we use the Lenard Jones potential twelve six for interchain interaction. The method is based on the treatment of real gas using the second variable coefficient for the interaction between two beads on in the lattice. In this work, we use the first three shell of the discretized uh, Lenard Jones energy to speed up the calculation. After we define all Hamiltonian to describe the energetic of the system, the metropolis criteria is used to determine the movement of the bead in the lattice. If total energy getting lower, the movement will be accepted. But if energy goes higher, we have to determine the comparison of the Boltzmann factor to the random number lambda. If it is larger, the movement will be accepted, otherwise it will be denied. This performed to prevent the local minima trapping of the polymer chain. First, on the result, we present the total interchain and intrachain energy of the whole system for the linear and cyclic polyethylene. This is the conventional way to validate whether the system is equilibrated or not. As we see, after the 20 million Monte Carlo step, the energy change become unstable, uh, become stable, which can presume that they are equilibrated. But this is not for the polymer crystallization system, so we have to perform other techniques. We then use the orientational autocorrelation function to justify the relaxation of the structure. It is seen that the cyclic polymer relax readily, while the linear chain is hard to justify because it had form almost trans conformation. We then use the uh, mean square displacement to see the center of mass movement. The linear system diffuses larger than its radius of gyration, so we can confident to justify that our system are equilibrate using these two criteria. The simulation was performed by stepwise cooling at both system from the melt step and equilibrated each step for 10 million Monte Carlo step until it reached the room temperature and then we perform 80 million Monte Carlo step for equilibration of crystallization process. This is the equilibrated cost gain structure of linear and cyclic polymer of the polyethylene. You see that the linear uh, polyethylene folded into the lamella beautifully and uniformly as the single domain crystal but for the cyclic system is folded divided into three or four domain of crystal with the different orientation the crystal formation process affect the trans fraction increase to 0 0.85 value which is the one 
point zero value is the completely crystallized. But due to the long chain of polymer, there will be some gauge conformation to allow the polymer folding. For the cyclic, will have lower value. This not mean the crystallization is bad, but for the cyclic polymer, there's more point of folding to form the double layer which require more gauge conformation on the polymer chain. Then we see the anisotropic chain in the polymer chain dimension in terms of radius of gyration. Each laboratory axis upon the uh, crystallization, the linear chain elongate periphery into the one particular direction is Z direction, whereas the, there is no general trend for the cyclic topology. This result suggests that the linear form the one domain crystal and oriented in one direction, whereas the cyclic chain form crystal with multiple domain and different uh, direction of orientation so that the radius of gyration in X, Y and Z axis has no significant difference. We now investigate the overall bond orientation in the system using the global order parameter calculated from all bonds. The linear chain achieved the SG value of equal to a 0 0.7, which is uh, substantially larger than those cyclic chains which have less than 0 0.1. This result suggests that the linear chain can form crystal with more ordered structure compared to the cyclic topology. It is not that the lower SG value on the cyclic does not represent that there is no crystallinity. This is because the, uh, because the cyclic system contains the crystal with multiple domains with different orientation. We then determine how bond at the different distance of the shell number will be oriented using the order parameter. As the crystallization proceeds, the order parameter is monotonically increased. It is also seen that the bond at the second shell show the highest correlation as parallel orientation. The order parameter at the higher shell is steadily decreased, suggested to more random orientation for bond state far apart. Next, we investigate the bond order correlation function in the same chain. In general, when the crystallization takes place, the decay of the order parameter is lower as the chain adopts more trans conformation. The cyclic polymer has an upturn point at 10, which is the half length of the chain due to the topology effect of the polymer cyclic. Next, we determine the bond conformation as the number of consecutive bonds in trans state. Compared between two temperatures, the polymer at room temp can have longer trans sequence as expected when the crystallization proceeds. Compared between these two topology cyclic and linear chain at the room temperature, the trans sequence on the linear chain can go up to 25 bond while the cyclic polymer can go around uh, 16 bond. We analyze to compare the chain packing between linear and cyclic chain using the pair correlation function. In the melt state, the PCF of two systems are almost the same. While at the room temperature, there is a significant difference that the linear chain pack denser than the cyclic. As linear chain have chain ends, it is easier for linear chain to find the position to stay closer to themselves, whereas the cyclic chain cannot. To get some properties that are related to the real experiment, we calculate the scattering structure factor using this equation. Simply speaking, we find the distance of Rij between all these pair and then multiply them by Q, which is the scattering vector. 
We sum this quantity for all beads pair and normalize by the square of number of the beads or n power by 2 to get the SQ. The plot at the left is the difference of SQ with S at the time origin to signify the uh, crystallized formation. The peak intensity will increase as the crystallization proceed. On the right side, we compare the quantity between the uh, linear and psychic polymer. It is seen that the linear crystallized better than the cyclic. Note that the amplitude of the cyclic system can be up and down, meaning that the crystal may be not so stable or it can change the orientation whereas there is a steadily increase for the linear chain. This is the summary of my work. Thank you for all of your attention and I want to acknowledge uh, the SUT University for the high performance computer cluster for the molecular simulation and DPST scholarship for tuition funding. Thank you for your kind attention. So feel free to discuss and ask the question.